Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel today. I spent a little bit of time over the weekend just really pondering and thinking about the world that we're now operating in, the world that we are living in as people, and just how different it is today in 2022 than it was in 2019. In fact, it seems like we're living in a completely different time, a new era now. And one of the things that I really thought about over the weekend was the different crises that we have right now. And the more I started to make notes and really just jot down my thoughts, the more worried I actually became as I realized that previously we might have had two or three major crises that were going on. But right now I counted over 35 major crises that are going on, not just in the USA, the UK, Europe, Canada, etc., but actually globally, and how all of these are converging at a rapid rate. And if you remember my forecasts around this, we are really on point at the moment as to where we are right now and going into 2023 and how this is going to get worse and worse. In fact, you remember not long ago, I was talking about how we are going to see a recession, that we were going into recession. And now the mainstream media and the government seems to have caught up with that forecast. And this is what we're hearing. The last couple of days have been severe. And I mean really, really severe in what we've seen with markets just crashing very heavily, cryptocurrency market losing a huge amount of um, volume, a huge amount of value, which of course affects the greater economy. Or as I would say, when the markets go down, that affects the crypto market. But this is really bad because so many of you have pensions or have savings or have investments. And what we're seeing right now is playing out perfectly with this great deleveraging that we are going into. And this is just the start, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the end like we've been told, although we are seeing this shift now in the media and they are moving towards that this it may be the beginning of a new downward recessionary cycle. But I just wanted to touch upon some, I made some notes, um, some of the crises that we are in right now. And of course, the major one, the most worrying, I would say, to most of us is war. Now, okay, we're not in a conventional war right now with, let's say, Russia or with China, for example. But we are already in a proxy war, as I've said, for a long time now. It is a, a war of economics and scale. We're seeing a lot of these things playing out with sanctions on Russia, with Russia going into Ukraine, with China threatening over Taiwan, America threatening China over Taiwan. All of these things which has now put us into a proxy war. Now that would be for me one of the things I'm most concerned about going forward. But let me just talk about some of the other things which I think are more closer to home for me, to, to you, for your families, whoever that is, whether it's you and your immediate family, your children, or whether it's other people, your brothers and sisters, your parents, whoever it is in your community. And I think we all know people right now who are really badly affected by this rising inflation, this cost of living crisis. So let's look at the first one then, and this is food shortages. And what we're actually seeing is these food shortages which are leading to famine. Yes, we are seeing famine on an unprecedented scale around the world right now. Mainstream media isn't talking about any of these things. They're not even mentioning the famine that is being seen. I honestly think that we could see tens, if not hundreds of millions of people die in the next three to four years from famine. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to scare people around this, but that is what I think we're going to see in the developing world. I also think we'll see it in other nations as well, but it's predominantly going to hit the developing nations because they simply cannot afford to pay for the food. What else are we seeing? Exploding food prices in the West. Australia has it really bad at the moment, but the UK and USA and Canada will catch up with Australia with these food prices. Why? And I'm going to read through a lot of these crises, by the way, so just bear with me as we, as we go through this. Why? Again, energy inputs. Diesel, what are you seeing? Diesel, gasoline, petrol. These prices are exploding. 
they are so high that you are going, in fact, what we're seeing now is all these calls for a four day week. A lot of people are saying it's to reduce stress. And again, that may be the case to reduce stress, but also I think it's because they know there isn't going to be enough energy. There isn't going to be enough fuel. And the cost of living crisis is going to make people traveling to their job unaffordable. So we're seeing this move in a lot of countries now towards a four day week. We're also having warnings from our own governments about electricity blackouts or more specifically electricity rationing as we come later into 2022. And the UK is, is one of the ones that most surprised me with mornings and evenings where there will not be electricity. So what else do we have? We have a difficulty in assessing healthcare and medication. Why? Because Western governments allowed China to take over all of the medicine creation. Most medicines now are created in China. They have somewhat of a monopoly over the industry, the healthcare industry. Why is it difficult to access healthcare? Doesn't matter where you are, because so many people, healthcare professionals, left the industry because they weren't happy with the mandate. So they left the industry. You had all of that experience just leaving the industry. Now you have shortages on medicines and other things because they're in China, they're manufactured in China, they're shipped from China. And what does that mean? Well, China's doing more lockdowns, more lockdowns, more restrictions on manufacturing. We also had the baby shortage formula, and now we have ladies feminine products shortage in the USA. This is supposed to be the most developed nation on the planet, and yet you're having shortages in the most basic fundamental products that you need. Supply chain breakdowns, you can't get items, supermarkets putting prices up at a rapid rate. This is causing a cost of living crisis. You're going to see people having less money available every month as this keeps going. And I've said from the beginning, I told you two years ago what would happen with all of this inflation. No one listened to me. I was the crazy guy. But this is the same thing we have seen over and over and over again in history with fiat currencies. After the printing or creation of all of this currency that you then see exploding prices. It's always the same. Inflation always hits, let's say, 18 months later. So we haven't even seen all the inflation coming in yet. And the latest CPI print, not just for America, but the UK as well, is proving what I said. We are just seeing this continually running up and they're not going to stop it. These interest rate rises, which I think are gonna be more severe now, we'll see if the US Federal Reserve does a, a 75 basis points rise this week, which is 0.75% for everybody else. We'll see if this happens. If this does, watch what happens with property prices and mortgages later on, specifically in the USA. But we're already seeing this moving throughout the housing market now, all of these issues. We are seeing it. We're having all of these home building going on, just like we saw 2005 through to 2007. And then we're seeing a slowdown. So when you have more built and then you have a slowdown or people can't get credit because this is how people buy houses now, it's not cash, it's on credit on a monthly affordability, you're seeing a slowdown. You're going to see this slowdown. You're gonna see this bell curve that I talked about. This is all playing out. The markets, we're seeing the markets, there's a crisis there. There's a bubble in housing, there's a bubble in the markets. We're seeing this slowdown now, it's already happened. That forecast is playing out. Crypto, NASDAQ, Dow and S&P and the FTSE and all of the others, and then the housing. This is all playing out exactly. So all of these problems with sourcing workers and everything else, this is going to go away because there simply won't be the jobs when the demand curve flattens, starts to fall because of this inflation, because of everything else, people will be crying out for jobs. People keep asking me, Neil, should I retire early? Should I leave my job? Should I do? And my answer is always the same. No, don't retire just yet. Keep saving, keep working, just keep grinding because you are going to need every penny you can get your hands on in this period to come. And I do think this is going to end very badly. We haven't even seen the bail-ins yet of your money in the bank account and everything else with the bail-in law. Cryptocurrency platforms have changed their terms and conditions now, so you are no longer um, holding you know, your, your crypto in their, in their uh, platforms. You are now creditors as well. So if they fail, 
they are going to bail in your crypto. I just gave a warning on this in my Patreon. I made you know a couple of posts over the last couple of days, very detailed as to what's happening and what actions I'm taking now. Highly recommend you read those posts if you are in the Patreon. But let's go on to the next points. What else are we seeing? Building supplies, problems there. Aluminium or aluminum in the USA and other basic materials. They are deliberately attacking these. They've said they're attacking these industries because they create too much CO2 and methane and, and all the other things. They want to reduce these industries by 50 to 60% by 2024. So this is only a couple of years. Some of them say 2025. This is happening at a rapid rate. That's why you're seeing these changes happen at such a rapid rate as well. We have a fertilizer shortage. Fertilizer is what feeds the world. This, the world is not designed for the amount of people that we have right now. It is fertilizers which are created by natural gas and, and other uh, energy to create the fertilizers. The fertilizers go on the crops. The crops then grow bigger. You get bigger yields. You can feed more people. You can also grow corn like they do in the US that isn't for human consumption, but it's for uh, animal consumption or, or, or some of the other um, grains and things that they grow. We have sovereign debt crises in many countries. A lot of countries were saying, oh no, it's okay, we're not gonna you know, use fertilizers and we're not gonna do this, we're gonna go organic. And they realize the mistake later on, they try and then import food and they, they're now having debt crises. We're having a lot of this, uh, 14, 15 countries now are now having debt crises. They're going to the IMF, they're going to all of these other places to get bailouts and they're just not coming unless they come with very strict conditions that are be imposed on the people. This is leading to food riots in a number of nations. We saw what happened in Sri Lanka. We saw what the mob did to the government officials, even the, the, the prime minister's son. Very nasty stuff. But I am worried that this is what is going to happen in other countries unless these leaders get on board and they start looking after the people and not looking after this you know, big agenda that they are all pushing. Because if the food supply is continually attacked, and we are seeing this, I don't think that is too strong of a word to say that the food supply is being attacked. We're seeing all sorts of random strange thing, millions of chickens being called, millions of pigs, millions of other livestock, uh, sheep and cattle, and farmers being paid bonuses to leave farming fertilizers not being imported, food factories mysteriously setting on fire, several planes just happening to fly into a, a food factory, and all this weird stuff. I believe in coincidence, don't get me wrong, but there's certain things when I, I love statistics and numbers, that's what I go by, I don't go by emotion. When I start putting all this stuff into my models, it shows me this is not coincidence. The numbers do not lie. What else are we seeing then? What other crisis do we have? We have a pension crisis. Watch my video on that. Uh, be very wary if you have a pension. There is a lot of issues coming with pensions. I do not have any pensions. I don't hold any pensions. I'd be very wary. Check out my video on that. What else? Mass migration. We're seeing an emergency on the southern border. Uh, how people can keep saying that there's nothing wrong, that there's no problem there is beyond belief for me. I don't see how people keep saying that. We're seeing the same in Europe. I said this would happen on my video back in 2020, The Great Reset. I talked about how all of this mass migration would continue. Again, very heavily attacked on these views, but people misunderstand. I'm not talking about asylum, people seeking asylum because you know they're, they're, they're concerned of death and all sorts of other persecution in their country. I'm not against people seeking asylum under those conditions. What I am against is people paying 5,000 euros or, or $10,000 near the border for coyotes to either smuggle them over the border or, or these what we'll call coyotes as well in Europe to put them on dinghies and bring them over here. Okay, there is a big 
difference between these kind of people. Uh, but of course, you can't talk about these things. You're, you're classed as a racist if you say anything about these people who are wealthy, some of them, paying to come in on, on dinghies and then seeking uh, asylum. These are the sort of problems we have. And the problems, a lot of them are here because we are not allowed to even talk about these things, even though we should be. We also had the collapsing of small businesses over the last two years. You'll remember my walk around London, London has fallen video, where I showed all these businesses that just collapsed and all the businesses that were going to collapse. Now the big businesses have taken over all the small businesses and we have these monopolies now. Monopolies and now we have some price gouging, not from all companies, but some of the businesses are doing this and then they are doing very manipulative tactics in society. They are adding fuel to the fire to make this even worse for the rest of us. And then finally, we just have this major social breakdown right now. So many groups who used to be friends are just turning on one another. Uh, the, the division is unlike anything I have ever seen before. And I think for most of you, it doesn't matter how old you are, probably you've never seen division like this in your lifetime. Now, how can this possibly exist, this division? It's pretty clear. It's being deliberately created. In the same way, crises that don't exist are deliberately created for profit. Surely you can see this. And of course, we've had so many laws change now under emergency powers that once the emergency powers were lifted, the laws were not changed back. Again, people are not even questioning these things. All these distractions and court cases and oh, celebrities and everything, it is distracting you from what is actually going on right now. But of course, we all know where this is leading. 2030, you will own nothing and be happy, apparently. A form of global socialism, which has been tried over and over again, hasn't worked, but somehow this time it's going to be different. Well, I may not have been around for as long as some of you who watch the channel, but I have read a lot of history going back thousands of years. I understand the patterns. I know how these things always end. The Roman Empire is my favorite sort of time period. And the examples there where you see this extreme wealth um, in the top 0.1% of people and then everybody else in, in poverty, pretty much. And that is where we are heading again if all of these plans come to fruition. Just look how many new billionaires were created over the last couple of years. Just look at how much new currency was created. And yet all this currency was created. Where did it go? Ask yourself that question. Where is all of this new money that was created in the last two years? Is it in your bank account? I don't think so. Or should I say I know it's not because I can see the charts and I can see the graphs and I can see that the savings rate of everyday people is crashing and the debt rate is climbing. So it tells us what is happening right now. And this is not gonna lead anywhere good, my friends. Please take the correct precautions, watch the videos on my channel, explains a lot of this stuff. Please join the Patreon, link below in the description if you haven't already. And look, please just prepare. Uh, please prepare yourself and your family for all of these things, all of the changes that are coming. You don't have as long as you think you do to take care of all of these things. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you tomorrow.